Uh, my apologies in advance before we even get started. I don't, I, at, at some point in the show, I used to dress nice, and now we look like the odd couple. I don't know what that's about. He's looking natty. I'm looking like I fell out the hamper. So I got to pretend like I won in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You are coming back from the West Coast. So yeah. Got to look yeah. the role. It's, uh, <laughs> it's the Buffalo No Huddle. It's brought to you by Ficarellas, and it's brought to you by Genesee Community College. I'm Jimmy Jam from CJ Country. I host the morning show from 6 to 10. He's Mark Tillery, and he produces this show and does a lot of other stuff for the LCN and the Daily News. So uh, we're here to talk about, painfully, but we're here to talk about the Bills losing to New England on Monday night and getting ready to play Tampa Bay on Sunday. And uh, the rubbers really met the road with this team, Mark. I, I, I have sort of resigned myself, and, and this is not to mean I don't love the team or I'm not <clears throat> going to be a fan or I'm a Fairweather fan or anything. I'm resigning myself to avoid the disappointment because I'm miserable when they lose. I'm resigning myself to the fact that right now the way the AFC looks, Unless something miraculous happens, I can't see them making the playoffs. Because if they lose to New England again, lose to Tampa Bay Sunday, and then, then they win three games against maybe those weaker teams, you're looking at 10-7. and seven. I don't know if that gets it done. I don't know if it gets it done. Oh, uh, man. The Bills are like that girl you asked <laughs> out on a date, and she's ghosting you. You know, you had all these high expectations. Everything was great. That's, everything was exciting. That's and why it hurts. Ghosted. We're getting ghosted by this team. And that's why it hurts because we weren't the only ones. It's not even the, the pundits, the local pundits yeah. and nationally all saw, saw the same thing. And I'm wondering where it all went wrong. And I don't know that there's any one answer that any of us can pull out of it. Maybe at the end of the season, maybe there'll be a postmortem. But um, yeah, I, um, it's really frustrating. And, and Monday night was a lesson in futility for me. Um, <clears throat> there's a lot of things you could point at being wrong. And we'll get into player awards and maybe talk about it a little bit. But just overall... I knew it was going to be a low-scoring game. I knew it was going to be a low-scoring game, and points were going to be at a premium. And so when New England busted that long run, I said, oh, man, you know, I mean, they, you know, here we, here we go. But the Bills had four opportunities in the red zone, and they only scored once. And, I mean, you cannot – you got to get touchdowns. you got to – you know what I mean? They had opportunities to do it, and they fell short. They did what they wanted to in the middle of the field, but for the most part, New England came with a plan – and they didn't even need to pass the ball. Everybody's talking about that. <clears throat> and I want to say there is a precedent for doing that in games. The 72 Miami Dolphins. Bob Greasy, I think, attempted six passes. It was either that or the Super Bowl the year later. But Greasy did not have to throw in that offense. Right. So it's not like you had six attempts in, this, in the Super Bowl. So it's not like, so you, know, you know what I mean? So, but, so Belichick <laughs> tapped into something they knew they could do. And they were like, we're going to throw this at you and, uh, you know, try to beat us. So... Look, the Patriots just outplayed and outcoached the Bills in their own they stadium, did. under in their own elements. This is supposed to be Buffalo's game. You can't even home. talk about home field with them. They're three and three at home. Yeah, right? and, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's just like you hope. And, and the thing is, this is Monday night. You rise to the occasion on Monday night. You are playing in front of a national audience. You're playing in front of your hometown. Who, well, who you're you're a fan. You, you you were in the seats. You went out there in the elements, bundled up, but you were still in the elements, going through pure heck uh, it, it, with that wind and everything. You play for those people in the stands. You play for your team. You play for your locker room. And just Bills got outplayed on every level. Rise up. That and makes... it's New England, man. New England got there, exacted their revenge for last year, and the numbers numbers continue to go up as far as uh, Bills versus New England. Talk about – it just makes me laugh when you say that phrase, rise up. Since 1995, they haven't won on Monday Night Football. They stoop and puke on Monday Night Football three times, and they've come away with a big goose egg, and they had an opportunity. It's not like they didn't have a top opportunity to win. They did. They totally right. did. Didn't take advantage of it. Let's talk about player awards here. Uh, let's go for our MVP. It's sort of a mixed bag for me, but I'm going to pick. I'm going to go with Stefan Diggs because down the stretch, I thought he was trying to make a win happen for them. Sure, you could go with Gabe Davis on the touchdown, and I'm excited for Gabe Davis's future because I, we talked about the receivers this season and where they could go, and I think he's going to be a starter next year. I don't got think that's even he's got a bright future. Um, you know, uh, Allen made some great throws into the wind, but I'm not totally sold on his appearance though. But you tell me about your MVP. Who did you think? Look, the man who threw Stefan Diggs a ball, Josh Allen. I get on him for a lot, okay? I, there, there's times I, I've thrown him on the bus, and, you know, rightfully so. But, I mean, he put up some numbers. He didn't put up big numbers, MVP numbers, or even Pro Bowl numbers on Monday. But he played the best he could in those elements. I wish he would have taken taken more leadership and, and, and taken some chances because Brian Dayball is, is on another level right now. Obviously, you can't go against the green here. An but, another level, does that mean, I mean, is that somewhere below the, the oh, trash? It's, oh, it's definitely below. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's great. The great he's value. on trash level. The great value of offensive coaches right now, man. 
I, I, He's yeah, not crap. Why no they've gotten away from what he does this year compared to last year. It's right. like design a run because when he had to run, he, he made some things happen, and that might have been the difference. Maybe doing that a little bit more. Look, it was just a perfect storm on that field and a perfect storm with happening to that team because Dawson Knox is usually reliable on every single level. Cole Beasley usually throws himself in there. Uh, you played a physical team in New England. Now, physical team, schoolyard bullies, I mean, think about it. Titans, Colts, Steelers, Jags. I feel now the Patriots add to the list. The Bills beat up on weak teams and get beat up by physical teams. The physicality is, is, is a thing right now with them, and I don't know whether they came in the season thinking they just had it knocked or maybe they lack some gen there's some general issues with the team. All I know is they missed A.J. Klein. A.J. Klein was out with COVID, and, and, uh, and he would have helped from a, a linebacker standpoint. You know, I, I talked about, you know, why don't they have three linebackers on the field more often? And they haven't right. done it, really done it since week six. He could have really helped them. He could have really helped from a run defense standpoint because he, in the last year, he's he's become a player they can rely on. You know what I mean? He's not the he doesn't have to be the starter all the time on the field, but as the third guy, he's the guy before Dodson, before Matikavich, before any of them. Um, who was your uh, better luck next time? This is the one we don't like to say least valuable player, but why throw somebody under the bus? So to speak. Easily, I'm not saying the game is over at that point, but <laughs> the wind certainly went out of T.F. Browns. The wind certainly went out of uh, Highmark Stadium. And it certainly went. T.F. Browns go pay for that plug? Yeah, probably so at this point. <laughs> no, but we were all sitting there at Bill's Baggers Bar, so shouts to them. Anyways, yeah, we, yeah. we were watching the game there. And once 37 ran it down the field, I, I'm watching 37 just plow through this, the, the defensive line. So 46 rushes and 222 yards says it all. The Bills allowed. 14, only allowed 14 points, but when you know the team is running every play, it's hard to prepare for that because you don't know if... We obviously don't have the defensive line to, to stop that run. You so. know what's making me nuts? There was a guy in the stands behind <laughs> me. Okay. A run's coming! You know a run's coming! Bro, that don't mean the run defense is any good enough to stop them. Captain Beer Drinker doesn't have the field vision that the Bills have. <laughs> they don't know what the, what's going on right now. The, it, it, easily, the, you make Mac look like a million dollars if he dumps the ball off to somebody. You know, either way, it was... That running game, New England physical team, the running game, man. Defensive line, just they <laughs> definitely better yeah. look next time. Yeah, just. yeah, that's I've got the run defense. I'm with you on that. Uh, bro, uh, bro, seriously, this is the one that just makes you scratch your head and go, why? I mean, you go first. You tell me who your bro seriously is. It should, by all rights, be Mother Nature. I mean, I feel... <laughs> <laughs> you blame her? Bro, seriously, Mama? No, but in all honesty, uh, you know, had it, I hate being that person that talks about football and says, had it been under in, in different conditions, it would have been different. Who knows? New England was a physical team that night. I, I'm it sure could have been. It could be worse. Game. We might find out if it's worse when they go to when they go to New England. Why, why you got to say it? No, well, just, it could happen. No, but I mean, here's my thing. As they say, loose lips and statements detrimental to a team's morale, especially with the Bills being as low as they are right now. So you're not blaming Mother Nature? I'm not blaming Mother Nature, but okay. I am blaming Father McDermott. Okay. Sean McDermott, Coach McDermott, uh, saying that about McKenzie and Stevenson, I, there was better ways to say, I don't trust those guys back there. Because when you saw, I'm sure you saw uh, one of their tweets when, when you... Yeah, McKenzie, McKenzie was like, you know, he, found, he, found out the, he found out the hard way that, yeah, that was the and, case. And, and the thing is, you, you needed every single weapon out there, like you were saying. Uh, yeah, I, I, before we started the thing, I was saying, saying if I didn't understand the inactives, making them both inactive. I mean, I get, I get it. Marquez muffed one last week. McKenzie had had that fumble when no one touched him. Is Matt Breida not starting this weekend? <laughs> yeah, well, he may not be. I, 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 that, that, don't even get me started on that. How do you fumble the ball when no one touches you? Phantom. No one touches you. Just leave it alone. You know, you just hold like on the ball. Episode that literally time. your job. Hold on to the ball. Um, no, I, I felt it was a mistake leaving some speed off the field. Yeah. Just leaving them both inactive. I, 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 I trust Micah Hyde, but he's not the guy who's going to take it back to the house for you. Right. We could have used a, a, something to flip the field a little bit. I just, I, it's obviously not physical conditions or anything like that because I'm sure Hyde could play every side of the ball if he wanted to. But the right. whole point is, what if he got hurt on that punt return? Then you lose another one of your big defensive backs in, in kick return and a punt return. I've never liked it, not unless your name's Deion Sanders, and uh, I can name other few uh, over the years. So you but question what McDermott said, or do you question what, what? I question what he said, but just talking about the speed on the field and talking about what was missing out there weapon-wise, you pretty much gave an open book to New England of what you were going to do. Yeah. They could have used the. They could have used maybe just a, every now and then put Stevenson or put uh, McKenzie out there just to change the mindset a little Bro, bit. Seriously. Are they going to jet sweep or are they going to go 
you know, vertical, you know, I mean, they need a speed merchant. And next year, one of those guys hopefully is going to find their way onto the roster right. or, you know, I mean, because who knows. But I'm telling you, don't be surprised next year if Beasley and Sanders aren't on the team. We know Sanders only on a one-year deal, so that's likely. But even 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 Beasley, I think for next year, I think is going to be, you know, they could, they, don't be surprised they let him go because he's getting up there a year. Sanders, they... Mm. They played the physical game against Sanders. Some of those hits he was taking out there, goodness, man. And then not seeing Beasley in the slot really disappointed me. There were certain ways you could have, Josh could have got the ball to people. I just don't know what the heck was going on with coaching, man. Bro, seriously, it, my, mine is coaching, but it's Brian Dable and with an asterisk with Sean McDermott because those two are not on the same page with one another. How can they be? And you know what? Before the season started, they should have known they don't have a running game. And yet, how many times do we see Dable on first down? go off right tackle with a run. Yeah. It just wasn't happening. Didn't have the horses for it. We don't have a bell cow running back. We don't have a great offensive line. We struggle on both sides of the offensive line. And it comes down to a few things with this team. You know, uh, it loses battle line of scrimmage no matter which side of the ball they're on because right. they don't pass rush. Um, but getting back to Dable. Dable sometimes is too cute for his own good, and then sometimes he couldn't be more unimaginative if he tried. Allen proved that he could throw in that win to an extent, not all the time, but he was able to throw in certain situations yeah. and it, over the middle to Knox. He completed Goal one, he, one he, he, you know, and, and, the, and the pass to Davis. And here's the thing. I don't think, I think McDermott and Dable are not on the same page. I think uh, Dable is high on his own supply because he's becoming an NFL coaching candidate. Yeah. Right now, the way the Bills are sort of unraveling a little bit, is if you're another team, is he your guy all of a sudden that's going to take over your team? I don't know. He certainly and, uh, and, and, and if he can't get on the same page with McDermott, would we want him back? Look, I'm ready to, I, you know, I mean, just, I'm just, I say this out of frustration, start the Ken Dorsey era, but I'm, but I'm kind of in that line. I'm kind of in that mindset. I, don't, I just don't know. It's just frustrating when you've got somebody like Josh Allen that they have gone away from who he was last year, yeah. designed runs and set him up for success to do the things he does, and they've gotten away from a lot of that, and it is mind-blowing. Here, that... Here's the best way to put about about Brian Dable. Mm -hmm. You have an offense consisting of Josh Allen, Stephon Diggs, Cole Beasley, Emmanuel Sanders, Dawson Knox, and Gabe Davis. That's all, that, That's basically schoolyard pickings right there. You're picking the best the best offense to, to Plus run. Plus you can go with McKenzie? And you got and you got Kumaro, who who Aaron Rodgers wants, yeah. and a toe that works. You know, I mean, it's so I mean, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you point. mean. He he has a box of toys. He's basically going to go out there and be the coolest kid in the playground. He just can't seem to. This year, I don't know why it is. There's the disconnect this year, and they can't just adjust and make it some really things is, happen. It's very there's, frustrating. It's just we're over excuses at this point. We're over Josh going up to the podium saying. Uh, I could have played better. I don't want to hear I could have played better anymore. Just go out there and do it. Well, what's he supposed to say at the post-game press conference? <laughs> look, press conferences, look, players should never have to do post-game press conferences ever. Reason I'll being, agree. reporters agree. ask the same questions over and over again. Reporters are brutal. Well, what are they going to ask? The that media, what are they going to ask that they're going to get answers back for? And what are players supposed to say to the them? The hard-hitting questions. They don't gonna, say that stuff anymore. It, everybody is so pre-programmed because the PR people tell you what to say, what to think. You right. got to go back to the '70s and '80s, and even before that, when you got real honest opinions from players. When people they worry about fallout with social media and everything the way it is, everything gets magnified, amplified. And these guys are afraid of making a move, and rightly so. Who wants that? Who wants that? Right. They want to go out and play a game. And it brings you to a point that um, Patty Thomas, Thurman's, Thurman's wife, brought up. Because there was that incident after the game. I don't know if you saw the post-game press conference with Hyde and Boyer. Yes. The whole thing that happened with that. She tweeted about this. She said, I'll say this and I'm done with it. In no other profession are grown men made to sit and publicly be disrespected and antagonized about their job performance. This was not about performance. It was, it was about insulting and provoking, period. So she, she took issue with Jerry Sullivan's comments of to them. It was a heartbreaking loss in front of your home crowd. Why do you even want to speak after that? I would have been in the locker room and, and, and gone at, at that point. Yeah, I I'm one of those guys. If you know, I, I don't begrudge players for what they make no, because the market dictates that and all that stuff. So I, I'm of that tact. We're getting sort of off the beaten path here, but the sure. point is, you know that press conference afterwards was just was just bad. I, I, I you know, I, the fact that he, you know, if they, you don't learn anything from them. You really, really don't. Although we saw how mad McDermott could get. McDermott definitely was irritated <laughs> by everything. Yeah. But here we go. But, but Dable gets my uh, Dable gets my uh, bro seriously. And rightfully so. Let's talk about from the view from ten thousand feet. Right now, I'm mentally preparing myself for the Bills not to make the playoffs. If they surprise me, cool. But right now, it's better not to think that way, so I don't disappoint myself. So we come back after this little uh, mention for Ficarellas as we get our game time fix on. We're going to talk about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Bills got a big one on Sunday. Not sure they can get over the hump, but we'll see. We'll talk about it.
Nick Piccarella, the pizza making universe. All right, Tampa Bay, 425 on Sunday at home. Tom Brady, MVP. He, yes. is, he is the MVP Without of the week. Doubt. I think, I mean, he's just, he just he's, he's killing it at age, what is he now, 90? What, I, I don't, I, just, he's about I, 147 years old at this point. <laughs> it's, just, it's amazing what they've he been able to like do down there. He's 146, he's killing it. He's surrounded by the horses, though. What a, what, what a surprise. You build, you build, you know, you, this is what happens when you build a team around a, a quarterback. This is what Suppo happens when you do suppose, things right. Well, supposedly we have a team built around ours. We just can't find the OC that'll, that'll get it together consistently. <laughs> but let's talk about the fact that, you know, you look at the Tampa Bay and uh, Mike Evans, 99 receiving yards last week. Chris Ooh. Godwin had the most catches of any wide receiver in a single game this season. Uh, well, you're 15 for 143. Damn. Then you've got Rob Gronkowski, another two-touchdown game. It's his 20th of his career. Oh, That's the man. most by any tight end in history. It's going to be tough without Trey White on Sunday. Uh the, like we said before, and the weather made it sort of a irrelevant point, but I brought this up last right. week, too, when we were on the audio podcast, um, that Hyde and Poyer are going to have to roll to help Dane Jackson over there. You know what I mean? Because those are tough receivers. I mean, they are in, a, in for a fight, and Brady could dice them up. Brady is, uh, when you mentioned Gronkowski right then, and Brady, in the same sentence, as a Bills fan, it still strikes fear in my heart. I, 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 we're playing these. It should. They're, they're still playing at optimum level. The Bucks are certainly the favorite, and that makes sense because Sunday, you're not only playing the Super Bowl champions, you're playing a hot team. Brady's a problem, but also, too, on defense, they got Vita Vea, they've got, they've got, um, they've got, uh, and Dominican Sue, Levante David has yeah. got, a, you know, is always a tackling force out there for them. Um, they're not an amazing defense. They're not an amazing defense, but they're good enough. And uh, they present problems on both sides of the ball right now. They Look, really, really do. The the Bills just have had no sense of consistency over the past. See, couple that's of weeks. the thing. If you knew they they're had, the Jerome Bills right now. Since like, they, honestly, man, since they, they were four and one at one point, and and now look at them at seven and five. So that tells you all you need to know. They've been they've been three and four since. They cannot get it together. Look, I'm willing to let that Pittsburgh loss go. It, it is what it is. Open the game of the season. We we remember. The, I'll never get let that Pittsburgh loss. We go. remember. Never. We remember oh. what Buffalo did to New England on, on New England Super Bowl winning year. You know, with Sam Adams running it back, you, we can have the history lesson there. But the Bills have just had an epic stumble after showing us that they could be a Super Bowl caliber team. It's just been an epic stumble. It's Yes, there's injuries. Yes, there's COVID, uh, people on the COVID list and everything else. I don't want to hear that. Everybody's got that. Yeah, everybody's, everybody's got it. Look, look, the only saving grace I could tell you younger fans, I'll give you something to, to believe in. Right and, it may not be something, <laughs> and it may not be something for this yeah. season. But in 1988, the Bills went 12 and four. Yep. Went to the AFC Championship game, lost to Cincinnati, who went on to face the San Francisco 49ers in Super Bowl 23. That wasn't even a game. And then <laughs> Boomer man. No, that was a, no, that was a game. They remember came down to John Taylor's touchdown at the that's end. That's right, that's right. I'm thinking it was, uh, it was a close San one. Francisco had some nice years after that. Yeah. So, so you got that, and then you've got. Uh, oh, I know what you're thinking. Are you thinking of the John Elway Super Bowl? Yeah, I was thinking John Denver Elway Super Bowl. Yeah, that was, and, a, that was 89. And I remember John Taylor but in that game. So, in that 89 season, the Bills. Won the division, but they were nine and seven. They took it. They took three steps back, and then they went out in the first round against Cleveland, the Ronnie Harmon game. They yeah. where he drops the ball. So what I'm oh, saying, but it. after that, the Super Bowl run began. So you know what I mean. Keep hope alive. Although, when you look at this team from ten thousand feet, uh, you know what I mean. It's like they had a lot of holes to fill. They need. They need a. They need a pass rusher. They're gonna. You know, uh, Trey. If he's not ready to go near the start of the season, it's gonna be close. They need another cornerback back there. They need depth. They need a bell cow running back. They need to grab, keep grabbing linemen, offensive linemen. Right. There's there's holes all over the field they got to fill, and I hope to God that this window for them isn't closing right now. That we're seeing that. Right. You know what I mean? They're their best opportunity to get in right now without having to go through a little bit of retooling or whatever. Um, had their losses been close games, you could say, hey, this they've had still... four of them have. They've been one score what, games. The They're zero four in those one score games. The Colts game though was just it. It, it was reality for me that. Oh, that, that, that's why that's why I have a similar thought. I have a similar thought about that based on that game. What's going to happen Sunday? Yeah, believe that was, you me. That was that was that team that that came in there and everybody's thinking we're, Buffalo's going to win, and uh, they beat them up. And that to me, that to me took me from this level to this level where it's like, okay, 
I, I, I have to face reality here. Other teams have caught up to Buffalo in the offseason. Yeah. What did the Bills do to get better in the offseason, really? I mean, granted, they had, they had no room to move during the ca through the cap. I get that. Right. But you know what I mean? Other teams had the ability to catch up. The only thing saving grace next year is there's going to be a little more cap room and cap wiggle. Maybe there'll be some things that happen, right. but they got a lot of contracts hitting that, that bottom line, too. So we got to see what kind of cap room there I just, is. With the core team that you have here, you just don't want to lose some of those key pieces. You don't want to lose you know, those corners. You don't want to lose. Yeah. You know, it, There's a lot of things that you, you don't want to see go, and time is not on our side. See, the disappointment is so great here because of our expectations of what the team should have been, as yours were at the start of the season that you start going from talking about, we started talking about Tampa Bay here, and it's become the 10,000-foot discussion again, yeah. the macro discussion about the future of this team and where they're going, can they make the playoffs? It becomes those. It's, it's inescapable when things get bad like this. All right, we'll be back with this message from GCC, and we'll give you our picks. Stick around. Choose a school where the arts come alive, where science and technology thrive, to create something extraordinary. No matter which path you choose, GCC gives you the tools to start your next journey. Because when you choose GCC, your time is now. About your pick for Sunday. Uh, look, man, Brady is definitely that team that strikes fear in the heart of Bills fans and Buffalo Bills in general. The man, the man does not age. I mean, you know, they, you know what his secret is? You ever heard the, the story about the fact that he doesn't eat strawberries? I have not. The reason is, I don't know why we're going off on this tangent, but I heard this the other day and it just blew my mind. He does not eat strawberries because they are not an anti-inflammatory. So he only eats foods that are not anti-inflammatory for his joints. They, who knew that was the secret? I should have been... I, sh <laughs> I could have fixed all this. Could have been in my prime. Who knew? But yeah, he's the man. He's the man, and, and right now, try to stop him. He is the league's MVP right now. You know what? It, there's, it's definitely no secret that Brady it, might as well eat cans instead of strawberries because he's the GOAT, straight up. Like I, I, I don't care if he's wearing red, white, and blue. I don't hey, care hey, if he's wearing the, the, the colors of the Bucks. Right. He is the GOAT, and you got to respect that. And I don't think there's any way, not unless they, they turn it around, that Buffalo's going to go in there and, and even touch them. And I'm going to be kind about this. And I'm giving the Bucks uh -oh. a 28-13 win over Buffalo. Okay. I, I just I just see Buffalo's morale being low. This this Monday night game, the Colts game, it's all just been a slap. I, you beat up New Orleans, they were an easy team to beat. Mm -hmm. It was easy pickings. Whatever. My point is, the teams that played physical against you, you can't touch. And the Bucks are a whole nother level. Super Bowl champion, ready to go back, rinse and repeat. So... 28-13, man. Buccaneers. I'm sorry, Buffalo. It's so funny. But I got to be real. When you said that score, I did the math in my head what that spread was, 15 points. I got them 35-20. Once again, 15 <laughs> points spread, but I got the, it's the same. No, it's yeah. the same math. Yeah. It's just different. It's a little, a little bit different. But um, Remember we were giving Buffalo 40-some points earlier in the season? That was our prediction. Yeah, Buffalo's going to gonna put up 42 to 20. Now it's the, oh, my goodness, how, how things have changed, man. Yeah, things have really changed. It's, yeah, but, yeah, 35-20 Tampa Bay. Uh, until they show otherwise. It's going to be real tough going down the stretch. It's disappointing because, you know what I mean, it's because of the expectations. It's disappointing because of, you know, we started the show, you and I. Hopefully we're going to be talking about some really cool stuff down the stretch. And right now it's, it's, a, it's murky. The water is murky. It's yeah. hard to see in, and it's cold. It's, it's winter cold, and I experienced that at the game. I was about to say, <laughs> man, I, the picture you put up of you and Margo on, on Facebook and on Twitter, and I saw that, I was like, this man is, is just a, a champion. Like, he gets out there it, through the elements, no matter what, risking everything. Because you, you obviously six, need your voice for work. There's 65,000 uh, <laughs> of them that were champions on Monday night that were there doing it. But uh, Props to the fans I, I, I Look, I hope it turns out differently. I do. And, and I... Here's the thing. Bills fans, do not personalize this. You can't control everything. Number two... You can only bash on players and coaches to a point because they are human beings and they're trying to figure this out. Is it frustrating? Absolutely. We'll see where it goes from here. Hopefully it'll be a happy ending for us. If not, there's always going to be a next year. I don't you hate to say that because they're still very much alive. They're the seventh seed. They didn't even end up out of the seeding. They're number right. seven right now, but still, they well, got to they gotta get wins together. I guarantee they don't win this week. They'll definitely be out of the seeding next week. Let they me ask you win. this. What are your thoughts? What, how, does, how does the road work for Buffalo to make sure? I mean, we need how some does the road work? They, I mean, they, no, they need some losses from, from other teams, obviously. 
But oh, the, I couldn't even tell you right now. It, it's 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 like the, it's like that pair of headphones that you have, you know, wrapped up in your pocket. Those earbuds that you're trying yeah. to untangle. No, who, who knows? Yeah, who knows right now? They, we'll have scenarios maybe come week uh, 17, 18. But right now, so bottom line, they don't beat the Bucks. It's it's uh, they would, no, no, they're not done if they don't beat the Bucks. But it's, uh, it's I, think I, I said at the start, ten and seven. They lose to New England twice, lose to Tampa Bay, but they get wins in the other three games. They beat ten and seven. But is that enough in the AFC? Right. And will the tiebreakers? Because they got a couple teams ahead of them on tiebreakers yeah. right now. So I mean, they, they just got to win those games. Got to win those gotta, division. Got to handle their business. Uh, so it's every every game counts when it's the yeah. NFL. It really, really does. Uh, I'm not an overly religious guy, but pray for the Bills on Sunday. Let's see if they maybe shock us all and get get back in our good graces in our hearts. We love them the either way. Got to thank Alex Brasky. We got to thank Ficarellas. We got to thank GCC. And uh, we'll be back next week, another Thursday night, with another edition of the Buffalo No Huddle. And hopefully not licking more wounds at that point. For Mark Tillery, I'm Jimmy Jam. And uh, go Bills. Go Bills.